Now, it turns out that different concentrations of weak acids have different pH values uh, and different percent ionizations as well. So this is the exact same acid, acetic acid, except now we're going to do 0.5 molarity, whereas we did 0.1 molarity before. And it says, what is the pH and percent ionization? So we can set this up in exactly the same way. Where we have our Ka reaction, which is acid plus uh, water, goes to hydronium plus acetate. These are all going to be molarity ice tables. This time we've got 0 0.500. We don't care or we're not including the concentrations of our liquid. We have approximately zero and zero on our product side. Subtract X. Add X to our product sides. And uh, our Ka is 1.8 times 10 to the minus fifth. And it's going to equal x squared over 0 0.500 minus x. Very similar to last time. We still ignore x. And we get x squared equals 1.8 exponent minus five times 0 0.5, I get 0 0.000009, which let's see, I'm using this calculator this time, one of my favorites, and I'm gonna put it in scientific notation and I get 9.00 times 10 to the minus sixth. And then I square root both sides. Second, oh, I don't know. Let's see, where is the square root button? Uh, square root button. Oh, there it is. Yeah, it is the second function. Second function answer. Oh, that didn't work at all. Let me try it again. Oh, that's an X. That's why. Wrong button. Square root. 9, x minus 6, 3 times 10 to the minus 3, 3.00 times 10 to the minus 3 molarity. And we'll cut to the chase this time. That's going to be our concentration of H3O plus that we need for our pH. So pH is going to be negative log of this number. Let's see if I can do that in one step here. So log, answer, yes, I get 2.52 for our pH, and our pH has gone down, that makes sense, uh, it went down from our previous one, where it was 2.87, if you increase the concentration of your acid, pH decreases. More acid, higher concentration, lower pH. Uh, and uh, But the percent ionization does something a little different. So percent ionization is going to equal the 3.00 times 10 to the minus 3 molarity over the 0 0.5 times 100%. And this time I get... Uh, well, let's do it. 3 exponent minus 3 divided by 0. 0.5 times 100. Uh, see, that's in scientific notation. 0.6% and technically 0.600%. Because as you increase the concentration of the acid, the percent ionization decreases.
decreases, which, oh, that's the same thing as the pH. Um, and so, but what we're saying is that this reaction with the 0.6% being less than the 1.34, so the reaction is going less. Um, and as you get more and more or higher concentrations of acid, you do run into crazier things that we leave for more advanced chemistry classes. Next, I'd like to talk about uh, what are we really doing when we calculate the pH of a weak acid? And there are really two equilibria at work here. Uh, and we always deal with the largest Ka first. So uh, two equilibria, two acids. And the first acid is acetic with a Ka of 1.0, or sorry, 1.8 times 10 to the minus fifth. And the other one we always have to remember is water. Remember, water is an acid. Its conjugate base will be hydroxide ion. And it's Kw. I don't know if this is on this list. Let's see. Kw is not on this list. Uh, and Kw may not be something you've seen since um, Gen Chem 1. It is 1.0 times 10 to the minus 14. And that's clearly much less than Ka. And the rule here is, and we'll see this as we work through the next problem more explicitly, but when we're dealing with the Ka reactions of acids, you always deal, so this is like the Ka for water. Um, you always deal with the largest Ka value first. And in effect, if you have more than two acids, largest Ka, next largest Ka, next largest Ka, all the way down. And we'll see this uh, as we move in. I'm actually going to leave this space here down below because I think the work on the next page will take up more than the next page. What happens when two acids are mixed? This is a complex problem, but it's one that we want to take on. It says, what is the pH of a solution with 0 0.10 molar hydrochloric acid, a strong acid, and 0 0.10 molar uh, that's formic acid from which you can look up its Ka value. We don't need to look up the Ka value for HCl. It's a strong acid. If we looked it up, it would very likely say a very large number or just simply very large. Which means that that reaction goes to completion. Let's deal with this. And, and we've, we've been dealing with... Um, HCl being a strong acid going to completion ever since Gen Chem 1. So uh, first, HCl. And we will write it out a little differently now. It's going to be HCl plus water because this is our Ka way of writing it. You could write a double reaction arrow since all reactions are at equilibrium. Uh, however, we can still write and I'll write approximately 100%. Uh, strong acids will go 99.9999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999
approximately zero because there's a teeny, tiny, teeny, tiny bit left, but essentially zero. And we know at equilibrium, it can never really be zero. Uh, that means when we have a number for our change in concentration, that we can then, it is equal to the same number on the other side since they're all minus x and plus x's. And our equilibrium concentrations are essentially 0 0.10 for our hydronium and our chloride ions. And that's our first acid. That's going to affect things in our second one. In our second one, we're going to have HCOH, and I'll leave a little space here, because now I remember there is a uh, molarity for this ice table. Add water. This one is truly at equilibrium. We end up with hydronium and acetate. Oh, no, formate. H C O O is minus, is technically how that's written. But uh, if you put took the other H away, in this case, it would be wrong, but it would still be okay because it is. Um, we have 0 0.100, 0 0.10 for our introductory or initial concentration of formic acid. We've got, no, who cares about water? Now we've got 0 0.10. So we have another 0 0.10 on the product side, which is new. And we've still got zero for our formate ion as a product. Well, we know we have zero on the product side. If we were to do a reaction quotient or a Q calculation, we would see that Q is zero. We also know that anytime there's a zero, the reaction has to go in that direction. This is always a good thing to check from our equilibrium chapter, because if there was a 0 0.10 where the formate ion is, here, the reaction could go backwards instead of forwards. Anyway, just things that are rattling around in the back of my head here. Uh, so now we have to do minus x. We have to do plus x, plus x. That's an x. 0 0.10 plus x, 0 0.10 minus x. And our Ka equals 1.8 times 10 to the minus 4. We know that that's the Ka value because we looked it up. Oh, and it's in the problem statement. <laughs> but it's also in our Ka table uh, if it's not given. And this is going to be 0 0.10 plus x times x. Those are our two products which appear in the numerator of the Ka expression. 0 0.10 minus x and 1.8 times 10 to the minus 4. That's right on the cusp. In fact, it's a little bigger than we can technically ignore x typically. But it turns out, which color do I want to use now? See the black. Um, that when you have uh, x in the numerator and x in the denominator, that they will be small. That means that this is just 0 0.10 over 0 0.10, which we can cancel out. And x equals 1.8 times 10 to the minus 4, which is the constant, oh, which is the concentration of formate right there. It is not the concentration of hydronium, though, this time. Concentration of hydronium is 0 0.10 plus x. And since that's what we're looking for, since we need to calculate pH, it's going to be 0 0.10 molarity plus 1.8 times 10 to the minus 4 molarity, which is so small. That's why we ignored it. We still get 0 0.10 uh, molarity and our pH 4.1. I think I know the answer, but I'm still going to run it through my calculator. 0.1, oop, 
log of 0.1 is one. And we learn a couple things. So one is uh, strong acids are strong. They, uh, we know, learn how to do an ice table in terms of a strong acid where we can, uh, and because it's 100%, because it's K is very large, because it's 100% or essentially a 100% reacted or ionized, you don't have X's in the ice table. Um, we learn that you can have a number on the product side if you have two reactions going. And then finally, we learn that the amount of hydronium made from the weak acid is negligible, essentially zero. And we could have ignored this second ice table as far as calculating our pH.